the Lord. Greetings to everyone in the precious name of our Lord and Savior. This morning, I'm so excited. Hallelujah. Even though I was not here the last couple of days, uh, I know the Lord was blessing you all. Amen. Anytime when we separate our time for the Lord and uh, sit in the presence of God, God is ready to move in a very mighty way. Amen. Even though I didn't know uh, what was the messages preached, yesterday Pastor Sonny Philip just uh, made a mention that the Lord was uh, asking us to move forward. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. My question is, what are you expecting this morning? What are you here for? Uh, are we here to receive something saying, Lord, I pray for this thing and I need, a, I need an answer? Or something beyond? Praise the Lord. Something beyond of our needs this morning. The Lord wants to take us. Yesterday I heard something and when brother was leading, Lord help us to change our gears. If we are traveling in first gear, it's a high time to change the gear. Amen. Praise the Lord. Moving forward. I heard something like this when the Lord received that five loaves and two fish. What did he do? He blessed it and gave to a man. That answer is good. But normally we, we have a tendency to think that he gave to 5,000 and above, right? No, he gave to the disciples. Praise the Lord. The Lord is talking. He gave it to the disciples. Five loaves and two fish, blessed and gave it to the disciples. The church is not at the recipient side as 5,000. No. How many of you got that? We are not sitting like 5,000 and receiving, Lord, thank you. No, you are the disciple receiving the five loaves and two fishes which have already been blessed. Yes, yes, and amen. we are supposed to, yes, hallelujah, yes, give to the people. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. amen. So the Lord is trying to do something in our midst this week that we are going to be empowered by his power. And then we are going, moving forward with what he has given in our life. Yes, amen. 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 Yesterday I was um, pondering some other subject also. Regarding something which moves forward. Hallelujah. The river of God in Ezekiel chapter 47 came out of the, the temple of God or the presence of God. And it started flowing out of the temple. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What we normally look is, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit of God move inside the church, right? That's normally, it's our prayer. But what he saw in that vision was something beyond. You know, when we meditate uh, Ezekiel 37, we see the value of bonds. And when the prophet was asked, what's going to happen? Is this bonds going to lie? He said, you know it, Lord. And then the Lord said, prophesy to the bonds. Each and every word has got prophetic utterance, right? So receive whatever it's for you. Say prophesy to these bonds and it shall live. Amen. I'm taking that word. I heard four or five amens. Yesterday when I was working, I told a co-worker, what do you mean by amen? 
she said uh, something at the end. I said, Amen is your signature behind a received check. Praise the Lord. Say, suppose Pastor Sonny Philip has given me a check. $2,000. Amen. $2,000 signed by him. But unless I signed it behind and submit, that is no value. Amen. You're not signing the check. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When we say amen, that's a signing of whatever he has signed already. Hallelujah. So prophesy to the bonds. And this bonds became alive. And the Bible says it became an army. Right? But the following pages, we don't see necessarily what this army did. But chapter 47, it says something moving. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God, the river of God started moving out of the out of the temple of God, right? And what was the vision? That's not our preaching subject. The vision was the river came out of the temple of God in heaven and then it started flowing through the earth. Hallelujah. I read something like this. Heaven invading the earth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Put it down. Heaven is invading the earth. That's what happening when we have been filled with the Holy Spirit. When we sit in the presence of God. When you experience the presence of God. That's what happening. The heaven is invading my life. Hallelujah. When I, when I received that word, I was like, wow. That's something. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means heaven is invading on earth in my life. Wherever you go, when you carry this anointing, what happens? Heaven is invading. Heaven is invading. Hallelujah. These days, through your life, heaven is going to invade places. How many of you want that? Hallelujah. Lord, invade somebody's life through my life. Hallelujah. Wherever this river went there, it happened. The river moved. Hallelujah. No, normally what we think is, you know any fish, how do you know it is alive? It moves against the river. Hallelujah. I like that. Mm. Against the river. It doesn't die and flow with the river. No. What is the significance of life? Why it is moving against the river? The Lord told me something. If you are alive, you want to know the source of it. Amen. Where it came from. Right? That's why it is climbing upward. I mean moving, swimming upward to know the source of it. So when you are in the presence of God, what is the what is the sign of your life? You will be moving closer and closer to the source of it. That's God Himself. Amen. And when the river takes you somewhere, hallelujah, that will be a blessing. The, the story goes like that. You, when, when you read that, when you meditate on it, hallelujah, you know something will happen. And But at the end of it also, there is something, some places, even that doesn't make any difference. There are some places, even when the river reaches there, doesn't make any difference. And I felt so bad. And that happened this morning. I just replied to my sister on Facebook that she was standing in front of somebody just like Jesus. She's from Jagme background, just like Catholic background. So I just made a, a comment. Thank God. At least you realize that standing before Jesus without any recommendation. And somebody known to her started typing left and right. So, uh, what is your job as a pastor? Are you not standing in between this, that? And after like 
half an hour. I was thinking, man, this guy doesn't even understand it. I'm trying to tell the closeness that Jesus wants to have a personal relationship with him, but he is just walking away and arguing his point. And immediately the Lord said, yeah, there are some fields will never flourish. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This morning the Lord is trying to invade my life and to me in great places. Hallelujah. Let's meditate some of the words which I already preached in this church. Matthew chapter, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 onward. Now the reason I am still again uh, ministering from this particular word that the Lord is trying to do something in our life and through our life. Amen. Gospel of Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 onward. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability. Praise the Lord. According to their, not according to his, according to their ability. Now we know that God is going to open up resources according to his riches. But the Bible says here, and he gives according to their ability. Praise the Lord. According to their ability. And straight away took his journey. And then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the, the same and made them other five talents. And likewise he that received two, he also gained other two. But he that received one went and digged it in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, you delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, you good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. He also had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you and that you are a hard man reaping where you are not sown and gathering where from you are not strolled. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the earth. And lo, here it is. His Lord answered unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knew it not, knew it that I reap where I sow not and gather where I am not strolled. Thou wast, that means you could have, therefore, I put my money into the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with the, the ashray, with interest. Take therefore the talent from him and give to him that hath ten talents, for unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance, but from him that hath not shall take shall be taken away even that which he hath and cast ye the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Lord talked to me a couple of weeks back and uh, ministered that word in this church. What are we doing with what we have? Praise the Lord. You might have heard many messages through this week regarding moving forward. Moving forward for what? Moving forward with what? Amen? 
Praise the Lord. You know what you heard. So ponder that messages into your heart and say, Lord, what am I supposed to do? And what can I do for the Lord? This morning I'll give you a couple of things that you can take home. This particular subject starts with the for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling. And at the end he says, throw this slothful servant into outer darkness. So this man who is traveling is God himself. We can know that God is giving his good things into our hands. Now there is a question here we don't see any commandment given to the servants, right? Am I right? Just gave it and he went away. But in Luke 19, we see something similar, but instead of five talents, he gave ten there. And the Bible says he expected something out of them. Praise the Lord. Chapter 19, verses 13 of Luke. It says, Occupy with this till I come. That in it says, He said therefore, uh, and he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. Be engaged till I come. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning, the Lord is asking me to be engaged in those things what the Lord has entrusted in me. Praise the Lord. Be engaged. Hallelujah. Take that word into your heart. Be engaged. Occupy till I come. So the master has given them his goods according to their ability. Now, I already mentioned that before. How do you know an ability of a person? How do you know it? How do I know this is who sings? By listening to her, by watching her singing. Praise the Lord. So the master is very much interested and keenly watching each and every servant from day one. Praise the Lord. How much he can handle. Now there is a personal message that you can receive this morning. God will handle, God will give you something or anything that only that you can handle. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. If you are going through something and you think that you cannot, no, the Lord knows that you can handle this. Amen. Praise the Lord. God will give you only that that you can handle, that you can go through. When you think that, Lord, this is beyond my capacity, the Lord will stretch his strength. Oh, hallelujah. He's going to stretch his strength to you so that you can handle that situation. How many of you could say that, Lord, yes, I was able to handle it. Yesterday I was, uh, I was sharing this word, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I know he is able, but how do you get that strength? Today we sang that song, I surrender all. By surrendering to his omnipotent power, he will strengthen me to handle any situations. According to my ability, he gave me what belongs to him. Hallelujah. According to your ability. He is watching your ability. He is watching you very carefully. Hallelujah. He will never heat up that furnace beyond that you can handle. No. According to their ability, he gave. Praise the Lord. Verses 16, please. Chapter 25 of Matthew, verses 16, if somebody can read. Anyone? 
Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. Immediately the first servant and the second one also, what did they do? Immediately went out and traded, did business. In Luke it says, you occupy with the, what I gave, right? How, who told them to be engaged in that kind of business? Who told them? As a slave, as a servant, they were supposed to do whatever being commanded, right? A slave is supposed to obey his master when something is being told to do. Then why did he acted in this way? The Lord gave me a couple of other verses. Luke chapter 2, verses 49. 2, verses 49. We know the story when Jesus was 12 years old, he went to the temple along with the Mother Mary and Joseph. And then after the festival, when they were coming back, Jesus stayed back. After three days of searching, finally, they could find Jesus sitting along with the scribes and uh, teachers and discussing certain things. And Mother Mary asked, why did you do this to us? Jesus answered something there. Luke chapter 2, verses 9, 49. Why were, you searching for me? Why were you searching for me? Yeah. Ah. Do, you know? do you not know? I had to be in my father's house. In a better translation it says, Do you not know that I am supposed to be in my father's business? Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now that makes sense. Am I not supposed to be in my father's business? Hallelujah. What is father's business? We'll read one more verse. John chapter 5, verses 17 and 19. Why I am reading this verse? Because, uh, you know, you should know why the servants acted in the way they acted. Hallelujah. John, Gospel of John chapter 5, verses 17 and 19. When Jesus healed that sick paralytic man and in between while we were worshipping this morning the Lord just gave me that particular scene of that healing even though I was not planning to touch it the Bible says in due times an angel of the Lord will come and stirs up the water in that pool praise the Lord the Bible says, whosoever jump into it first time, uh, he's going to be healed. Hallelujah. And the Lord said, I think it was when he was leading that, uh, you know, songs, uh, we were to praise the Lord. That is like jumping into the pool. You are worshipping the Lord. When the Spirit of God moves, and if I jump into it, what will happen? Aha. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will be soft. I will be engulfed in that presence of God. Amen? Amen. So that used to happen. Okay. When that healing happened, when Jesus was questioned by the Pharisees, oh, that was supposed to be on a Sabbath day. You are not supposed to do that. Jesus answered this one. Verse 17, please. My father worked even until now. Uh -huh. My father works, my father works, so I do the same. Praise the Lord. What are you doing this morning? Take that word into your heart. Jesus said, my father works, so I also work. Verses 19. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them. Ah. Verily, verily, I say unto you, truly, truly, amen, amen, I say unto you, the Son cannot do anything other than, uh, you see the Father doing. I, I see something the Father is doing. Praise the Lord. 
I watch carefully what my father is doing. That's what Jesus said. Amen. Jesus, Son of God, is saying, I cannot do anything other than what I am seeing my father does. Ah, what, what's the next one? Son can do nothing for himself, but what he sees the father doing for that, what things so, so ever he does, this the son also do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Whatever the father does, number one, I see those things what father is doing. Hallelujah. Number two, whatever he does, that's what I am doing. Hallelujah. So it is, he saw father is doing. He was keenly watching what the father is doing. Praise the Lord. And then son says, that's what I am doing. We know the son of God was sent from heaven to this earth to do things what father was doing. Praise the Lord. Okay, now when we compare this one to our story. Immediately the servant got up. He went and traded his money. Question. What, you, what are you doing with the, what you have? Number one, number two, the third servant is answering that question in a different way. He says, I know that you are a hard man. You will reap from where you are not even. So, hallelujah. The Lord is able to reap where he sowed, not only from where he sowed, from where he did not even sow. So, the master's mentality is to increase. Praise the Lord. Let that get into your heart. The master's mind is to increase. As brother was saying, we should not be in a stagnant place, position. Oh, we are fine. We got 150, 200 people now. Good. Praise the Lord. No. The master's mind is to increase. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How do you know it? I was watching my master do things. Amen. Keenly watching what the master does than doing business with it. Have you been told to do it? No. Then, that's where the, the depth of that story is. That's where it is compared to the kingdom of heaven. It is not talking about the talents or money, what you're doing with. No. It is the mentality shifting from what I've been told to do, what I've been commanded to do, do from there to rise up like Jesus Christ. He said, I see my father does something and I do the same, hallelujah, as a son. Changing from a slave into sonship. Praise the Lord. That made my heart so happy. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, he has been, he has called you and me not just to be servants, not just to be slaves, but to behave like children of God. Amen. To behave like sons of God. That's what he called us for. What am I supposed to do? Watch him carefully what he does with his goods. Amen? Number two, doing something the same thing what he did with his goods. Now there is one more point and then I will close. What did he do? He went and traded his five. What happened when he traded? Amen. Amen. He traded his five. He did business with the five. It never went close. No. No. When you do business with God, when you do business with the, His goods, when you trade His goods, 
you will never be put to shame. Amen. Amen. We will never be put to shame. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that word strongly and I receive it strongly. I will never be put to shame when I do things for God. Hallelujah. Because it is His goods. It is not mine. It is His goods. And uh, let me tell you one more thing. Yesterday I was listening to something. Be fruitful. Now, in order for you to be fruitful, what you need to know? Just tell me. What do you need to know? In order for you to be fruitful, what, to do? what do you need to know? You need to know what is the seed. Right? You want to be fruitful, but I should know fruitful over what? I should know that particular seed which is in me so that that can be fruitful. Praise the Lord. If I am a preacher, I cannot be fruitful in singing. Does that make sense? That means I should know what is the seed that God has placed in my heart, my life. And when God puts his seed, we know the word of God is being uh, set as the seed of God, right? The seed has a power. The seed of God has a power. It will come forth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It will come forth. The Bible says whenever a word is being spoken out of the mouth of God, it will not come back void. It will fulfill the purpose that which has been sent forth. That's why when you pray, when you when you say, when you speak it, speak the word and it is going to happen the same way it came forth. It has to happen. Because it's the word of God. It's the seed of God. It will flourish. It will be fruitful. Hallelujah. Our preachings are not vain. It will be impacted in this world. Hallelujah. You speak the word of God. You share the gospel to a person. He may deny it ten times, but it will penetrate into his heart. Hallelujah. There's no doubt about it. It will. It will. Praise the Lord. The, the seed has that power. So, he did something. He traded with the, this particular seed. What is that seed? The good, goods of the master. It belongs to the master. What did he do? He exposed that seed. He, he traded with that seed. He traded uh, something with the, which belonged to the master. Praise the Lord. Does that make sense? He traded. He did business. He exposed into the public that which belongs to the master. Praise the Lord. What did Jesus do? The Bible says, upon Calvary, in Romans chapter 5, it says, even when we were like sinners, God showed his love through Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary. Jesus was portraying to us, to the world, what God is like, what belongs to God. Love belongs to the Lord. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Healing belongs to the Lord. Power belongs to the Lord. Glory belongs to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. There are good things belongs to the Lord. He exposed. He traded with the word belongs to the Lord. And that started multiplying. How, how that is being fruitful? Hallelujah. In those areas. But the third guy, he said something. You know, I know you're a hard-hearted man, but I was fearful. I feared. I didn't do anything. You heard the messages last week. And uh, I couldn't uh, come to know all the messages, but, you know, your pastor, our pastor wrote something, told us to move forward, not to stay in a place, not to hide what belonged to the Lord. Hallelujah. Not to stay where you are, the same place where you stood last year. If I'm not growing, something is wrong. Praise the Lord. When you have a baby born, you know, born, thank God, congratulations to our first family. They got one more uh, baby 
Baby child, right? Grandchild. So their expectation is, ah, we got a baby next year, same age, third year, same age. No. They expect that baby to grow, right? So if I do not grow, something is wrong with me. If I am staying in the same place where I was, something is wrong with me. If I am hiding, you did the same. Okay, you gave me this, here it is. Praise the Lord. He was fearful, the Bible says. The two other servants also were, might have been fearful. Because when they know the master, if we risk our life, that, that's, that's scary. If, if it is not flourishing, that is scary. You know, as Christians, many times we are fearful like this. It is not coming as a fear, coming as, uh, what do you say? When you share the gospel, oh, if that person ridiculed me, no, I don't want to be embarrassed, right? Because of embarrassment, how many times we keep our mouth shut? Hallelujah. In post office, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And yesterday, even one lady came and told, Gigi, you have such an impact. Everybody coming and asking you, what is this, what is this, what is the answer, what's the word? And uh, you have a call like that. Even though she was telling many positive and negative things, I, I realized, what is your impact? What are you doing with what you have? Are you embarrassed in before, before the people? Are you still scared of things that, oh, if I do this and if it doesn't work, what will happen? Am I right? Praise the Lord. So what he did was, he exposed his fear. Even though we are, you know, if I am ashamed of the gospel to share it, what will eventually happen is, I am portraying my shame before other people. I don't know how many of you got. There is a preacher called Ashari Budeshi in, back in India. He's a carpenter from Hindu background, but came to the Lord. Such a bold person. He doesn't care whether it's a minister, senator, or whosoever. He will boldly open up the gospel to him. Which shows he is exposing what belongs to the Lord. Amen. And those guys who is keeping mom, it is not that they are being courageous. They are exposing their shame, their fear, other people. Amen. Amen? So if you keep quiet, even when you don't say anything, you are exposing your shame, your fear, your anxiety, your disappointment, you are showing it. So it is better to show His goods. Exposing what belongs to the Lord. Amen. This morning you are going to take that decision. Lord, I am going to expose what belongs to the Lord. Amen. And what did He do? He hid what belongs to the Master. He said, I buried it. Hallelujah. This morning, God doesn't want you to bury what things belong to the Lord. He wants you to expose it and He wants you to bury what belongs to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. What is it? My disappointment, my anxiety, my worries, my fear, my shame. Yes. Bury it. Hallelujah. And expose what belongs to the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, the gospel of the Lord, the salvation of the Lord, the power of the Lord, the glory of God. Hallelujah. When you expose it, it's going to flourish. Heaven is invading the earth. Hallelujah. Let us move forward. When the master comes back, he will say, good and faithful servant. Now, you are no more my servant. I will elevate you. I will exhort you. Come. Get into the joy of the Lord. Because I see something in you. You behave like me. You did business like me. You behave my, like my son. Hallelujah. God is calling us to move forward with what we have. To do business for him. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you.